the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. By, by being upfront, by being um, really candid, we are able to let people know exactly what it is that they're getting into. Now at six on DC News Now, getting ahead of hiring shortages. The push by the interim director of the DC 911 call center. And a shooting in Prince George's County leaves a teen girl dead in a community reeling. That's all over here is old senior people, retired people, and very little kids. My neighbors say the violence in their quiet neighborhood is shocking. And the steep price of eggs, it's nothing to yoke about. We're stretching your dollar tonight with the latest look at prices and cracking into savings. Uh, good evening. Thanks for joining us for DC News Now at 6 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan. And I'm Tasmeen Mufus. And breaking news at this hour, a man is dead after an altercation with police in Fairfax County. So in a series of tweets, police say an officer was involved in a, quote, struggle with a man in a parking lot. This happened on the 6300 block of Richmond Highway. Anyone nearby is being asked to avoid the area. DC News Now's Northern Virginia Bureau reporter Max Marcilla joins us now live from the scene. And Max, we know police are holding a media staging about an hour or so, but what have you learned so far? Well, Chris, it does mean just from being out here a little bit, it's really like any other active investigation. Police are still here kind of piecing together what exactly happened. You guys mentioned their tweets uh, kind of gave us a little bit of insight. I'm going to step out of the way and show you uh, what things are looking like as police are investigating right by uh, this gas station, this McDonald's. On the other side is, is the King's Crossing Shopping Center. Um, right now, police are looking into what happened, but what they say initially is that there was some sort of a struggle with a man in a parking lot. We don't know what that struggle looked like or what happened during that struggle, who initiated, why the officer and the man were interacting. Those are questions that we're hoping and expecting to get answers to uh, in a little bit. But then what we do know is that multiple officers fired their guns and they shot this man who was pronounced dead here at the scene. Um, the other part of the story, of course, is the traffic and the, you know, kind of road closures that this has caused. We know that Richmond Highway at the intersection of Shields Avenue and North King uh, has been closed. The police say uh, northbound lane, one northbound lane is expected to open soon if you do have anywhere to be. And of course, this is almost at the tail end, but still, uh, you know, a pretty active traffic scene, uh, you know, rush hour people getting to and from uh, work and their later activities. You definitely want to give yourself plenty of time if you are leaving. As it pertains to this investigation here, we've been reporting uh, on Fairfax County police, what they're calling officer involved shootings, instances where a police officer has fired their weapon. Uh, we know there's been uh, an independent review of the last several um, kind of a holistic approach uh, review at what's been going on. Uh, so I'm sure we'll ask about that when we do hear from Police Chief Kevin Davis who is here. But again, the latest that we know is that multiple officers shot uh, a man after what they're saying was a struggle in a parking lot. That man uh, pronounced dead. As we learn more, we'll update you. We'll send it back to you. Max Marcilla, thanks. Meanwhile, all new tonight, the woman in charge of DC's 911 call center answers to accusations by a local family. They claim their loved one died because of delays getting help. It's a DC News Now exclusive. Our political and government reporter Leonard and Fleming spoke to Heather McGaffin today and the family of Bernard Baker Jr. Yeah, Leonard, acting director Heather McCann said, McGaffin says there's no excuse for a delayed 911 call. No excuse, she says, and let's be clear, they are not accepting blame, but they are taking the investigation into these ac accusations very seriously. The Baker family, though, expects answers. Please hold for dispatch. Please hold for dispatch. He's Heather McGaffin, DC's acting 911 director, says this should have never happened, especially when it can lead to a loss of life. In an emergency, no one ever wants to wait. Bernard Baker Jr. died late last month, and his family blames 911 and the EMS response. A wait time is unacceptable in any situation. I want us to minimize the wait time as much as we can in any situation, um, because that is what helps build confidence in our system. He Baker Jr., 42, died in the early morning hours of April 30th after what they considered a slow response from 911 and then paramedics. McGaffin is not admitting to wrongdoing. It is under active investigation. We will be in contact um, with the family, you know, to, to explain our findings, not um, in a public setting, right? They, they deserve to hear it from me. Kevin Baker gave chest compressions to his dying brother before the paramedics arrived. 
it's still that we lost one. Uh, uh, attitude and an understanding of, of her uh, aggressively approaching the situation, this should never happen to anyone. There have been questions of whether the call center had enough employees working that night. A point McGaffin wouldn't confirm. The 911 call center held its first ever prospect day where more than 130 call taker applicants took tests. The agency has one out of every five jobs open. I'm happy that they're, they're doing something about it, but uh, we should have been done something about it. Bernard Baker Sr. says he's looking forward to McGaffin being transparent. We, we, we know where we stand with them. McGaffin would not say when the investigation will be completed. Fire and EMS officials are also conducting an investigation into their response time. Baker Jr.'s funeral and burial will be held on Friday. Reporting from the studio, Leonard N. Fleming, DC News Now. Leonard, thank you. All right, let's go check on the forecast for Chief Meteorologist Jessel Webb. Yeah, another beautiful day. Really, the pick of the week, right? Yeah, today was a good day, right? Nailed uh, it. Yeah, high pressure yeah. on top of us right now, but still kind of hazy outside due to that wildfire smoke coming in from central Canada. Taking a look right now at our temps, we did not tap out into the 80s in the district. So uh, kind of short of that this afternoon, back into the middle to upper 70s. In a few spots, our surrounding counties from Montgomery to uh, Loudoun County, as well. You were on the cooler side. You didn't have a uh, sunshine that was really out and about today, so that didn't allow us to get to uh, the lower to middle 80s here in uh, the district. Now, surrounding areas from Frederick, Maryland, Westminster, you touched 81 to about 82, and then you had Northern Virginia definitely on uh, the warm side. Today, dew points were very refreshing. Those are going to start to spike up as we go into uh, tomorrow. Tonight, though, whatever you have planned, you should be outside. Limited cloud coverage, but that's uh, high pressure it is retreating at this time and that's unfortunate because as we go into the weekend we're going to start to track in uh, these showers and this stormy activity it's already starting to really rev up this is a bow echo with severe weather out towards Mississippi I really am looking at that storm system and tracking its integrity for the next uh, couple of hours or so because that's the same storm that will impact us going into uh, late Friday into Saturday partly cloudy to mostly clear skies for tonight by that at 9 o'clock hour, we're in the lower 70s, guys. All right, developing now at 6, Prince George's County Police are investigating a shooting that left a girl dead and a man in the hospital. It happened in District Heights. DC News Now's Tosin Fikile has reaction from the neighborhood. Investigators say both victims were found shot inside a home in this complex behind me on 10 out place. And the shooting here is something one neighbor says is very unusual. This morning I found out with somebody that got shot. Last night I found out it was gunshots. And gunshots is why police say they were called to the 1800 block of 10 out place just after 930 on Thursday night. Investigators say that's when they found a man and a girl who were shot inside a house. They knocked on my door last night around about 10, 20, 30, asked me, did I see anything or did I hear anything? I didn't see anything, hear anything. I was in the bathtub, so I told them no. And they says, okay, it was an incident that happened next door to me. But the victims were taken to the hospital. Police say the girl later died. I feel terrible, man. That's terrible because that's all over here is old senior people, retired people, and very little kids. If they come, most of them grand people, the kids come to the grandparents. And those who live here still in disbelief this happened. This is not like the rest of the area. This is probably the first time this ever happened here. I'm not sure, but probably it is. Very quiet. That part is true because I never heard of a shooting. In District Heights, I'm Tosin Fakile for DC News Now. And the impact of inflation continues to creep up costs up and down the grocery aisle, and the price of eggs has been among the largest burdens. Yeah, no doubt, as DC News Now consumer reporter Ben Dennis discovered he is here in studio tonight. There are deals and discounts that you can really crack into, Ben. That's right, Kristen Tasman. Good evening. Consumers, they need to scramble to find savings before going to the grocery store. Sure, those paper coupons could help, but resources on your cell phone can also help lower your grocery bill. How did we get here? Well, millions of chickens were killed to slow the spread of bird flu and farmers had to compensate given inflated costs. And while prices are 21% higher in April compared to the year before, they are down a notable high in January. That was 70% higher than the start of 2022. Now, federal data says the average cost per dozen eggs 
$3.27. A quick price check, Harris Teeter promotes $3.69 for 12. Prices below the national average at Giant, however, as well as Walmart. Giant, $2.79 for store brand and $170 over at Walmart. And here's where we found ways to save. As you just saw, price checking between retailers plus digital coupons. They're offering a dollar off or more, as well as cash back with grocery rewards programs. And believe it or not, cracking open your eggs and freezing what's inside is safe. The National Center for Home Food Preservation says eggs can be frozen and stored safely, and ice trays can help keep them separated. Stretching your dollar for DC News Now. Ben Dennis, back to you. And thank you. So we're continuing to stretch your dollar tonight with Mother's Day right around the corner. Amtrak is offering a Mother's Day travel deal. So Amtrak is calling it the Mother's Day buy one, bring one 50% off flash sale. Kids from 2 to 12 years old ride 50% off. This deal is valid for sales starting today through May 17th and valid for travel starting June 1st to August 30th. I like gift certificates. Uh, and um, jewelry, <laughs> you know, not, nothing expensive, just something from the heart. That's all that matters. I'm going to call my mom, you know, wish her a happy Mother's Day, um, and I'm going to send her flowers as well. That is a nice sign. According to the National Retail Federation, Americans will spend more than $35 billion on Mother's Day this year. That is the highest amount of spending ever. The top three gift categories, they are cards, flowers, and going out for a special outing. This year's survey found most people will turn to shopping online or also in a department store. And if you're looking to buy a last minute gift for mom, be careful. There's a new scam targeting people looking for a discount. It starts with an ad usually on social media it takes you to a fake website. For example, the real Kate Spade website is katespade.com. But one fake website has the letters INUS after Kate Spade. Spelling errors like this are a common sign that the website you may be on, it's a fake one. You don't check that it's the real one. Click quickly buy. Your money's gone. Make sure that you can go to the same place directly from the website, the main website, and not just through the ad. Otherwise, it's a scam. Yoav Curran is a cybersecurity expert. He says just because there's a lock symbol next to the URL does not mean the website you are on is actually a legitimate one. It only means you have a secure connection to the website. 